from Niche. Here's Darren Lachman with Robbie Ayala. And here again is Mike Prue. As I was walking out on stage, Kelsey and Steve back there just told me that uh, Hill Holidays TV Next is now trending in the US, which is great. So keep those uh, tweets coming. Pretty awesome. Robbie, let's talk about you. <laughs> <Hey>. Robbie, Robbie, <laughs> Robbie. So I have a feeling that a lot of the folks here may not know you, but I bet that uh, teen girls everywhere definitely know who you are. Was your foray into becoming a social media celebrity a fluke, an accident, or is it something that you had planned for that you wanted? Total accident. Yeah. Uh, I was actually in law school when this was all happening. So, um, you know, we were, we were on study breaks making Vine videos, and then next thing you know, I have this following gathering. It, was just, it just kind of like exploded overnight. Uh, I think I picked up like 10,000 followers in about two days. Which is crazy, like, you know, the fact that I, I remember graduating college, my, I had likes up on the picture, I was like, oh my god, like 30 likes, I was freaking out. Um, so yeah, so yeah, it was really cool, like, pick up this following, and I just kind of, like, you know, ran with it um, during school, and the next thing you know, I was contacted by Niche to do a, uh, to do a branded post, and just kind of snowball from there. Yeah. We put together a little compilation, a short compilation of some of your vines. You haven't seen it yet, so hopefully you like what we did. Uh, let's roll that. I'm Robbie. Hi, Robbie. I'm a selfie addict. When was the last time you selfie? No, 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 no. Robbie really cracked when the iguana ran away. Excuse me, have you seen Ralph? OK, this is completely normal, all right? Robbie, what happens when you're 40? <laughs> Hopefully I'll be out here, you know, watching somebody <laughs> talk uh, on here. Um, yeah. That's also a long ways from now. It is a long ways from <laughs> now. Yeah. Right? Um, no, and that's, that's exactly what I did. Is I, I, I gathered this Vine following, like I said, in law school, and um, Niche contacted me with some uh, brand and post opportunities, and I ended up having a conversation with Darren, and I kind of parlayed it into, like, full-time now, 9 to 5. I work at Niche as an accounts manager. I facilitate cross-platform social advertising. So yeah, I, I like made a, another career out of it. It's way more fun and better than civil procedure. Um, so yeah, no, it's, it's, uh, it's, it's, a, it's a good time. That's a good segue into Niche. Uh, Darren, I read something where you had come out and said that Niche isn't an agent for these micro-celebrities or vine celebrities. What then do you guys actually do? Yeah, so it's definitely a really good distinction. We are a platform for them. So our first and foremost, a technology company. We started a year ago up to, I think we just brought on our 30th employee, but half that team is engineers. So we built a tech platform. Almost all platforms are built for brands. No one was built for creators. So we built a platform that allows creators to connect all their social accounts, get demographic data, engagement statistics, um, almost like a listening slash engagement tool for these creators that helps them sort of understand their following, helps them grow their following, and then we have the brand side where we're able to sort of connect them with brands and help run those in through technology. So you're not just representing 10 stars and saying pitch them to each brand. We have 5,000 creators on the platform who through our data we can segment based off who that brand wants to target and actually create really authentic content. So, um, you know, Robbie was super business focused. You know, he had three million followers, but also was really interested in the business side of it. So I think there's probably no one in the world who understands this stuff from both ends like Robbie does and um, works full time with us. But yeah, it's first and foremost a technology platform for creators. And then we have the brand offering as well. You said authentic co content. Uh, and, you know, essentially what's happening is brands are paying guys like you to do branded vines and, and other media, Snapchats and the like. Do you ever feel like you're selling out? No, because the way the content's uh, constructed on the career, well, that's tongue twister, on the creator side of things is that um, you fit the, the branded post in with your normal like organic content. So when your followers see it, it's not like an ad, it doesn't look like an ad or, you know, it doesn't look like you're selling out. It looks like you're either partnering with a brand or you're just, you know, doing a, a, like a funny, in my case, a funny post um, implementing that product. Uh, for, like, for example, about the whole selling out thing, before I, I got started with Niche, I did a uh, branded post for this uh, app, constructed a whole script for me. 
at the time, I was like, I was, you know, in school, I was like, oh, I need the money, I'll, I'll do it. So I went up there and I was like, hey, go download this app. And um, I lost like, like 5,000 followers that day. Um, yeah, it was, it was bad. So yeah, I deleted that and I, I learned from that lesson that, you know, the way you construct your content has to Did like... Did you say be, you deleted the content? Yeah. <laughs> I like, lost like 5,000 followers in a day. Yeah, um, interesting. Yeah, so... I mean, a lot of the branded content, like Robbie's HP Vines, do better than yeah. traditional Vines. I think that's like what's super interesting to sort of show that if the content's done right, it actually outperforms non-branded work. Um, but we're very strict. There's no posting. Like an agency can't give us a 30 second reel and be like, oh, post six seconds of this. Or right. It's all super authentic and has to fit within each creator's style. We put together a reel, again, very short of some other micro celebrities, to use that term, uh, that have done branded vines. So let's take a look at that. Check and see if there's any restaurants around here. No service. I'm lost. Check your GPS. No service. Is there a flight? I know, sorry about that. Coca-Cola freestyle. Yo, that's all about me style. Sorry. Yeah, I'm still here. Read this. I do. She said yes! Man <laughs> and wife. My little macaro, baby. <laughs> you in trouble. Off the kitchen. No problem. Maisie app on our digital strategy team put this together and when I saw the first cut of it I asked her, I'm like where where are the girls uh, on here it, are you finding that this is more of a male skew or did we just mess up in, in how we curated a little bit of both um, you know <laughs> <laughs> Brittany Ferlin is she for a while was number one viner in the world I think now she's has number two or three most followers so she's um, you know, Brittany, Simone, Leanne V, Jesse Smiles. So there's, you know, three or four Amy Marie who are in the top probably 15 viners in the world. A lot of them are male, but I think there's, I mean, we're seeing a huge amount of uh, female viners come on really strong. Probably Lele Pons is probably, has more loops than anyone in the history of Vine. She's a 17 year old from Miami, right? Yep. Has over a billion loops already. So a little bit of both. Darren, you said something interesting when we were backstage watching uh, Rainey speak, and she was showing the, the YouTube celebrity, and you actually said, you know what, that is old media. Yeah. I, I, I found that fascinating to refer to YouTube as, as old media. Yeah, that was supposed to be off the record, but... Um, <laughs> <laughs> I didn't sign anything. I don't... <laughs> um, no. Uh, so my background prior to this was launching a bunch of YouTube channels for a couple of years um, in that original premium channel experiment, and... We think YouTube's great. We work with a lot of YouTube stars as well. But, you know, for example, we brought nine sort of new age stars to a film premiere and were able to put out 72 pieces of content in one day across Vine, Twitter, Instagram, and Snapchat. If we had nine YouTube stars there, that would have been like everyone goes back to their hotel room and edits it and it's nine videos. And so while we do work with YouTube a lot and we like YouTube stars, um, we're looking at this sort of emerging channels as a little more... They're mobile friendly, everything's on your phone, it's right there, all the media is consumed mobile. You know, I think YouTube is 60% mobile. Well, Vine and Instagram are like 95% mobile and Snapchat's probably 100% mobile. Um, so that's sort of the difference in, in this wave. Well, and speaking of Snapchat, Robbie, you also said in the same conversation backstage that was uh, off the record, uh, the Snapchat <laughs> you see as, as really the, the next wave, the, the next future. Can you say a little bit more about what you meant? Yeah, so you can always, like follow, you can, uh, you can always like follow the like, creator's trends. For instance, um, a bunch of YouTubers like, YouTubers like Daystorm, Alpha Cat, Batch, who when Vine was, you know, just really starting to get going, they all kind of jump ship and, and they blew up on Vine, right? Now you see the same thing. They're always like promoting their Snapchats and, and you can kind of follow that creator trend because everybody wants to be relevant and nobody wants to be old media. So um, it's, it's very like, you know, they try to hop on the new platform when it's still fresh and, you know, um, try to, you know, beat everybody there, if that makes sense. The engagement's amazing too. On Snapchat, you actually have to hold your thumb down the whole time. So it's not a passive sure. view. Sure. You're actively watching and engaging with that content. So. I mean, we're seeing amazing sort of rates and openings, and Robbie gets what, a couple hundred thousand opens per Snapchat. So it's pretty interesting to see that. I want to talk a little bit about the creative process here, because 
clearly, you're working with brands. Uh, we work with brands, of course, and, and they have brand guidelines. They have things that they want to make sure are said, key points. Um, and, and sometimes uh, there's a lot that happens in the creative process that um, some of the creativity can dwindle a little bit away. Um, how are you working with brands to ensure that you're maintaining the kind of creative integrity that you want to put out there in the world? So, I mean, um, as far as like submitting concepts, you know, usually we'll submit written concepts, but there's like a happy medium where you know, you're getting the brand's message across and you're not really um, straying too far away from your own like organic content. So there's like a sweet spot. Um, a lot of times you'll see people really go far way into the brand and then they'll, you know, the content won't perform well or it won't be brand friendly at all and the brand's upset because, you know what I mean? So there's like a very, there's a very like specific spot where um, you can promote the product. Everybody knows it's an ad. You know, it's not like you're hiding the fact that it's an ad, but it's just, it's done so well and it's done so, uh, so much like your original content that people don't care. And they're okay with that, and they're accepting. And a lot of people, you know, you see comments. So you they know, tend to let go a little right, bit. Right? Yeah, yeah. Because you know, you're not. They don't look at it as like the brand's buying out your the space. They're looking at it as like you're collab you're collaborating with the brand, and you're creating like or, or original organic content with, you know, implementing the brand's uh, product. And it's really helpful for the brands and the agencies to give us guidelines and sure. what they want, focus and KPIs, and that sort of what yeah. we can. But like. Lots of brands, but I'll oh, throw this Bitly link in there. Well, like links don't click out on Vine or Instagram, right. you know. So it's so some it's some part education some as well. So I, we're going to segue into something that, um, frankly, I'm a little bit jealous of that you guys did uh, with HP. Um, you had a fun concept where you essentially interleaved all of these Vine stars together in one TV spot, and it was seamless, it was flawless. Can you talk a little bit about where and how that idea came from? Yeah, we were working with Twitter on a really cool campaign for HP around Vine, and they had this Bend the Rules campaign they were running. And the very first Vine we did, so we had five Vine stars locked in to do a, a campaign was Robbie's Vine, which you'll see sort of a rendition of it in this commercial, um, where Robbie snaps a tablet in half. It's, it's pretty amazing. It does, in the first day, it did 12 million loops. We then had a second line go up that also was amazing. The response was great. So Twitter, HP, and us sort of discussed that this would be a really nice segue into something bigger. Um, so within 72 hours, we had every creator who was participating in the campaign in LA, one day shoot, I think. Um, whole thing start to finish was 72 hours, one day shoot, and then it was on air five days later. And then every Vine you'll see in this commercial lived in its own on a separate version on Vine. And um, I think we've done 50 million plus views um, on those Vines as well, too. Let's play the spot. Oh, oh, oh. Did HP's laptop sales increase as a result of this? They did. To what yeah. degree? Yeah, I mean, we're not. Uh, so there's been. Uh, Was that I'm not, off I'm not, the record too? Yeah, <laughs> it's it's been given out at a couple of different uh, Twitter conferences. So I'm not sure if I'm allowed to say it, but a substantial increase in sales month over month that's tangible from this campaign alone. So it's, it's been pretty exciting. All right, we're going to take a question from Twitter. I am uh, just took out my LG tablet device. Um, for our LG clients, do you see what I did here? Do you see what I did here? <laughs> this is beautiful. <laughs> Partnering with LG. Uh, so Indie Listener wants to know, does the disappearing ink nature of Snapchat make it less appealing to advertisers? You guys aren't advertisers. These are the yeah. ones making the content. Yeah. But what have you heard from the brands that you're working with? I think, I mean, there's both sides of it. I think, A, it's appealing to creators because the content's gone within 24 hours. But the Snapchat stories, especially for content that's really you know, timely, it makes a ton of sense film premieres, anything on broadcast television, like you want to drive tune in right away, it's an awesome audience. But yeah, I mean, some longer term evergreen brands, it's, it's going to be a challenge for sure. But we're super bullish on Snapchat. Robbie, as you're working with brands, and we have a lot of CMOs, senior brand managers here in the audience and tuning in on, on the live stream, what can you tell them to give them advice in reaching teens and millennials um, so that they're not making mistakes? Yeah, I would, I would tell them to tap the content creators that have a large following and have been very successful creating these followings. 
Um, I think a lot of a lot of uh, brands are kind of scared or, or think it's risky, and it is risky because it's never really been done before as far as you know this cross-platform social advertising. So. I, I would tell them to like really tap the content creators and do your research on that content creator so you can feel, you know, um, risk free that they're not going to do something like off the, you know, go crazy or you know have a freak out. I was about to say Amanda Bynes. Uh, if go, you know, do something like insane like that. So I don't know if that makes sense. That makes a lot of sense. That's awesome. Anything else you want to leave this audience with? People tuning in. Any final thoughts? I think the one last thing with the nature of the subject is it's a solid transition with TV as well. It's a really nice compliment. The TV strategy, we work with a lot of entertainment folks too. We use social to drive tune in, and you know, it's the second screen, um, obviously, as everyone says. So I think, you know, aligning your TV and broadcast strategy with social makes it, is, is ideal. This went by really fast, which yeah. means it was interesting and we had awesome. fun up here. So I want to thank you guys so much. Thank, thank you. you. All right.